Benzene is the prototypical aromatic molecule, and it contains three carbon-carbon double bonds. So, rather naively, we might expect that benzene undergoes reactions that are typical of alkenes, like ethylene, C2H4. However, because of the profound stability of benzene and other aromatic compounds, it doesn't undergo a lot of the reactions that alkenes undergo. For example, you can hit an alkene with an acid, like HCl, a hydrohalic acid, and expect addition of H and Cl to the alkene. So, for example, tetramethylethylene will react with HCl to form a product in which we protonate one end and we add chloride to the other end to produce this alkyl halide. Benzene does not undergo this kind of reactivity. In fact, you can put benzene together with the solution of HCl and the two will pretty much sit indefinitely. No reaction will occur. That said, benzene and other aromatics do undergo reactions, just not reactions where addition has occurred. Notice that's what's going on here. We're adding chloride and H plus across the bonds of the alkene. Benzene doesn't undergo addition reactions because those would destroy aromaticity, but it does undergo reactions in which temporarily aromaticity is destroyed and then it's restored at the end of the mechanism. So typical Reactions of aromatics are substitutions rather than additions. And there's a step that destroys aromaticity, which is typically rate limiting or rate determining or the slow step. And there's a step where we get back aromaticity. So aromatic substitution reactions are often two steps mechanistically. We're going to look at the two major classes of aromatic substitutions in this series of videos. Electrophilic aromatic substitutions, in which the reagents form a strong electrophile, and nucleophilic aromatic substitutions, in which the reagents form a strong nucleophile, and the aromatic or heteroaromatic contains a good leaving group or nucleophage like bromide or chloride, and even fluoride, for reasons we'll see later, that can be displaced by the nucleophile. So, we're going to start with electrophilic aromatic substitution. This is the more widely used substitution reaction of aromatic compounds because aromatics themselves tend to be relatively electron rich with all those pi electrons. We're going to see the general mechanism of that. We're going to learn to predict the products of simple electrophilic aromatic substitutions of just benzene itself and then substituted benzenes, which is where things really get interesting. We're going to learn to predict and rationalize the relative rates of reaction of substituted benzenes, drawing on our understanding of electron donating and withdrawing groups and how these make aromatic rings stronger or weaker as nucleophiles, respectively. We're also going to learn some new functional group interchange reactions related to functional groups that are linked to benzene rings. And these are going to be helpful when we're thinking about synthesizing polysubstituted benzene with many substituents arranged in a particular pattern around the benzene ring. Recall this idea of ortho, meta, and para substituents around a benzene ring. There are many, many different possible substitution patterns for a lot of different benzene rings. And we can use these functional group interchange reactions to just expand the scope of the benzenes we can make. So we'll talk about those and plan multi-step syntheses, incorporating those as well as electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions. We will investigate nucleophilic aromatic substitution in which the aromatic or heteroaromatic ring bears a leaving group and a nucleophile displaces that leaving group. This does not involve SN1 or SN2. It involves typically a two-step addition elimination mechanism. You see that on the slide right here. It can also involve elimination prior to addition. And the elimination addition mechanism incorporates a special, a very unique type of reactive intermediate known as a benzyne, which looks like benzene with a triple bond in the six-membered ring. More on that later. For the time being, you can see from these learning objectives that we're going to survey electrophilic and nucleophilic aromatic substitutions, apply these reactions in synthesis, and dig into their mechanisms. To kick things off, Let's make some observations about the reactivity and really the lack of reactivity in benzene. Benzene is unreactive in reactions that are typical of alkenes. So a typical reaction of alkenes, for example, is treatment with Br2. And actually, we see three examples here of cyclohexene reacting in typical electrophilic additions to alkenes. So Br2, we get the typical anti-addition plus the enantiomer of this compound. Treatment with an acid and water leads to acid catalyzed hydration. That gives us cyclohexanol. Treatment with KMnO4 and NaOH, that's going to lead to oxidative cleavage, 
gives us a dicarboxylic acid like this. Benzene does none of those things whatsoever. Benzene can sit in a solution with Br2 and no reaction will occur without the addition of uh, a catalyst, which we will uh, see in the video on halogenation of benzene. And you'll notice that this does pick up a bromine in a different way under a very specific set of reaction conditions, and we can see that lower, lower, lower down on the slide. With water and acid, nothing happens. Even with KMnO4 and sodium hydroxide, nothing is going to happen to that benzene ring. It's completely under unreactive under these typical conditions of alkene addition reactions. Benzene is not a typical alkene, and we're familiar with this, this idea at this point. However, benzene does undergo reactions. It undergoes substitution in the presence of strong electrophiles, and six important examples of this kind of substitution are shown in this kind of starburst format. These are all substitution reactions, and to tell that, it helps, I think, to draw in the implied hydrogen here in the starting material that's being replaced in each of these reactions. So there's a hydrogen there, and we can see that it's being replaced with bromine, chlorine, these two types of halogens, with NO2, the nitro group, SO3H, the sulfonic acid group, R, this is a carbon group, an alkyl group, and an acyl group, which is a carbonyl CO double bond linked to an, an R group, a hydrocarbon group. So each of these six types of substituents can be installed using reactions that we'll learn shortly, and they're all electrophilic aromatic substitutions. They're all based on this idea that we're going to generate a very, very strong electrophile, E+, something that is dying to receive an electron pair. It's so desirous of an electron pair that it can essentially pull an electron pair out of the benzene ring it can engage these pi electrons as a nucleophile. And in so doing, ultimately after the loss of H+, we've installed that electrophile where H+, was previously. So as we just saw in an electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction, an electrophile E+, which comes from the reagents, substitutes for H+, built into the benzene ring from the get-go. And the key to EAS reactions, the thing that differentiates all the various EAS reactions, is the conditions used to generate this voracious electrophile E+. After E+, is generated, and we'll see this shortly, the mechanism leading from this situation with benzene and what we'll call the active electrophile E+, to the E-substituted benzene and H+, the two-step mechanism to go from these reactants to these products is the same in every electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction. What gets tricky and a little bit complicated is generation of the active electrophile, and we'll dig into the mechanisms of those processes in detail in dedicated videos for each electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction. So some questions that we want to ask ourselves related to electrophilic aromatic substitution. Because E plus is really the differentiator here, we want to ask ourselves, what is the nature of that E plus, and how is it generated? How do we generate it from reactants or reagents used in the reaction? What, what's the difference between an electron-rich benzene with a donating group and electron-poor benzene with a withdrawing group in electrophilic aromatic substitutions? There are huge differences in rate between these two types of substituted aromatics because electron density in the ring is profoundly different in these two types of compounds. So we'll dig into that and learn how to predict and rationalize and rank substituted benzenes with respect to their relative rates in EAS reactions. What's the regioselectivity? When it comes to substituted benzenes, imagine there was another substituent somewhere on here, right? Imagine there was a substituent here, say. Where is E plus going to end up? Well, it could end up ortho to that substituent, meta to that substituent, or para to that substituent. And where it goes actually depends on the nature of that substituent in a way that we can predict and rationalize and understand using resonance, partial charges, and molecular orbital theory. Primarily, we'll focus on resonance in this course. Finally, how do heteroaryans react? What about a heteroatom in the aromatic ring? What if this was pyridine instead of benzene with a nitrogen in the aromatic ring instead of a CH? How does that nitrogen affect the, for example, regioselectivity of electrophilic aromatic substitution. If a nitrogen is here, where does E plus end up? What about the five-membered rings? Furan, pyrrole, thiophene, how do those react in electrophilic aromatic substitutions? All interesting questions. 
Finally, I want to highlight the active electrophiles, these E plus species that we'll see in electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions. And they're all wonky looking species that you've probably never seen before. They all have positive charge, which is typical of an electrophile. And they are all extremely, extremely electrophilic with positive charge on, on atoms where it's generally not very happy, shall we say. Cl plus, quote unquote, this is not exactly the active electrophile in halogenations, but it's a good analogy. NO2 plus with a positive charge on nitrogen. SO3H plus with a positive charge, depending on how you think about it, on sulfur or oxygen. R plus, that's a carbocation. And RCO plus is an acylium ion that still has quite a bit of positive charge on carbon. These are all very, very hungry for ele electrons. And as we survey EAS reactions, we'll see how each of these are generated under very, very, very vigorous, very harsh reaction conditions.